Welcome to another episode of Behind the Velvet Rope. Today we are at the Paley Center for Media in New York for its third annual Paley Fest, which recognizes some of TV's most critically acclaimed shows and stars. Come join us once again, Behind the Velvet Rope. Joss Whedon's blog sensation, Dr. Horrible, was one of the pioneers of viral content on the internet, and its stars continued to make great strides in the television world after it ended. Paley Fest hosted a reunion of the cast, and we were able to catch up and reminisce. Neil Patrick Harris, for all the great things you have done, Dr. Horrible was one of the coolest, and it was pioneering, man. Talk to me about being here, seeing the cast, and kind of seeing everyone again. It's got to be so cool. It's super exciting. I mean, it was such a strange, little, interesting, intimate project that happened through circumstance. And to have something like that that only took a few days to make on very limited budget with a lot of passion, to see that it has legs and that it lives, uh, lives beyond it, especially in Comic-Con land, yep. very exciting. When you look at, obviously we have Netflix, we have Amazon, all the streaming services taken over. This was one of the first real pioneering projects that we got to see the web kind of bring to us. Yeah. Did you guys know at that time, hey, we're kind of ahead of our time with this thing? Well, I think Joss Whedon's ahead of his time in most everything that he does. So it's fun to ride his coattails a bit because he seems to know, he seems to have the, the pulse on things that are two steps ahead of him and the world. So uh, yeah, I loved it. I mean, I. I, I mean, it's, you can't say that we knew while we were doing it that it was going to be a thing, right? You do it and you are proud of it, but you have no idea if it's going to flop or if it's going to succeed. And uh, I was just super excited to be involved. I loved listening to the original recordings. I love listening and lip syncing my own recordings. I still listen to it. It's a good piece of work. But this was one of a kind back in the day. It certainly had a, a lot of notoriety. We, we, we weren't the first people to produce something on our own, uh, minus the producers, and, uh, and put it on the internet, that's for sure. Our own Felicia Day was doing it with the Guild, and Joss would turn to Felicia and say, that's a, that's a, what should we do next? You know, that kind of thing, because uh, uh, Felicia's got the social media down. She knows <laughs> what she's doing. When you look back, it, it was incredible because you, you've done so many series, but this was so different. You had the musical component. There were so many different things happening at the same time. Did you guys know that, hey, this is kind of unique here? We certainly knew it was unique. We certainly knew it was going to be a good time. We were certainly having a lot of fun. It was as close as I think I've ever come to a bunch of friends getting together saying, I got an old box full of costumes and we can use my dad's barn for a, a stage. Uh, it was... It was too easy to be considered work, I have to say. It was too easy. Talk to me about seeing everybody again. I mean, I'm, I'm lucky to have seen them in many, many times since we filmed because it was such a family feeling on set. So, But it is nice to be able to celebrate something that was really pioneering. I don't know if there's anything even now that has equaled it in, uh, in kind of being an internet phenomenon and setting the bar so high. It was so unique, wasn't it? Did you guys know back then? I mean, you can feel some kind of magic when you make something you know is going to be well received, hopefully. Um, and when I was on set, I just knew that something special was happening because we were all just full, so full of joy. Talk to me about seeing everybody today. Oh, I'm so tired of these people. <laughs> when we just hoped everyone would forget about this. We could just go our separate ways, but it just clung to us like a barnacle. <laughs> it's just a nightmare. No, um, I, you know, I never get to see all of them at once, and I hardly get to see them at all. It's a huge thing. And, the fact that it's still alive in anybody's mind right now when, you know, at the time it was so of the moment, it was all about the strike and it was all about doing something whimsical quickly and and, uh, and yet here it is. That's, uh, that's the best feeling. It's incredible because now you see Netflix, you see Amazon Prime and the streaming services have taken over. This was kind of the first of its kind. Yeah, you know, we, uh, I kept looking for people to, uh, partner with and to do this you know sort of in a more traditional fashion and it just didn't exist so obviously there have been things like the guild that predated us that you know were inspirations for what we did but at the same time nobody made a musical yet 
As one of TV's most popular shows, Pretty Little Liars left fans in uproarious anticipation following its season five finale where the identity of its most mysterious character was revealed. We chatted with the cast about season six, how the show has changed their lives, and their incredible fan support. You're coming off such an oh, enormous reveal. So what can people expect yeah, for season seven? Well, we have uh, season six B and se season seven, which as of now is will be the end of PLL. But um, we've done a, a big flash forward because the whole series, we've been 17 years old, we've been in high school, and so we're now 23. We all have careers, we have jobs, we've all been away from Rosewood, and then we all get called back to Rosewood, and that's when the pieces start falling apart again but you know we introduce new relationships and you get to see the girls a little bit older dress a little differently our hair is a little different so it's been fun. <laughs> Troy and the phenomenon that Pretty Little Liars has become is it still mind-boggling to you? Yeah absolutely it's um yesterday or sorry two days ago when we were at Comic-Con it was mind-blowing because we make this show in the dark of a Warner Brothers studio and it's great we love working with each other but you never get to see it with other people. You never get to see it with our fans. And so to walk into a whole room full of people who actually watch the show, you're like, oh right, oh right, you watch this. That's kind of amazing. So I, I don't know, I'm not that into like social media and like so to see a bunch of people, you know, tweeting at me or something like that, it's really fun. But like to get to actually see them li like in the room in person, it's a very cool energy. It's amazing. I mean, our, our fans are so great. We're blessed to be in this position. And I, I like six years went by so fast, and I can't wait to start the seventh season next year. You guys are coming off a pretty big reveal that shocked the world. What can people expect in season seven? We are now actually adults. <laughs> and so the fans are going to see a, a whole different side of us. Um, what I think is great is that there's, there's just a, a totally new show. So people who haven't watched the show before can actually tune in now and really be able to get everything that they got from the very beginning. Uh, but there's there's the big bad now. So now that we're classier PLL, there's this new villain who is worse than the first one. What a behemoth you've created with this show. Phenomenon. And when you look at going into season seven, what Pretty Little Liars has become, talk to me about it. It's it's overwhelming. I mean, you you really you you hope for success like this, but but you never know. And and the fact that we're still here, I, I'd like to say it's a, a it's a mystery about a dead girl who isn't dead, and we're still here. You know, almost seven years later, it's 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 crazy, but it's all because of our fans. They're amazing. They're passionate. I love them. Showtime's critical darling, The Affair, continues its electrifying run into season two following its 2015 Golden Globe wins for Best Drama and Best Actress for Ruth Wilson. In season two, we see an expansion of character perspective as well as how an affair can affect people's lives from all angles. See what the brilliant cast had to tell us. This is such an incredible show, man, and congratulations on season two. Thank you. We get to see not only your point of view anymore, but now how you guys affected the other two people involved in the show. Talk to me about what people can expect moving forward. Uh, well, it's quite, it's sort of got doubly complicated because we've got, now we've got four different perspectives instead of two. And so, and because it's, we get her point of view and we get Cole's point of view, it's, um, it's, there's a lot more contrast in the points of view because we're not falling in love. We're not you know, like me and Alison. We're falling out of love, and so her memories of things are in wild contrast to mine. So it's quite fun. So I get to play. You get to play two different people, really, because because we're discordant. Our memories of what happened are more contrasting. So that's, that's quite interesting. The plot. I was talking to Dominic. The plot's getting a lot more intricate, seeing all the different points of views and the damage you guys did. What do people expect for season two? Um, well, it's, a, it's broken out into four versions of events and put four perspectives. And the idea of that is really to also question responsibility. Responsibility lies with not just the two that have the affair, but the other people that are in the relationship as well. It's, you know, relationships form and break up. 
down, are down to both the parties involved. So it's the idea that responsibility lies everywhere. And the consequences for these two are as great as they are for us. But also for Alison and Noah, it's about be careful what you wish for, whether this is really going to be the solution to all their problems, this relationship. And you find that they're both going through an even greater um, journey of discovery of who they are. And it might not be that they're meant to be together. The show has gotten so much critical acclaim, man. Does it blow you away how much people... Are, it's got to be so cool as an actor well, to be part of a project like that. I mean, that. I think actors are, are by, like, by nature paranoid people. <laughs> and I just am constantly waiting for the other shoe to drop. So, I don't know, yeah, it's freaking me out a little bit. Speaking of freaking out, there was a penis shot in the first episode. It's like the talk of the town. Did you know that even, was coming? I knew it was... Even, I even knew where it was coming. I was like... Hmm. TV has gone full frontal. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure that that adds much to the narrative, but there it is. Has it blown you away to see the critical the show has received? Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, it's You've been on so super many nice. great shows. <laughs> yeah. How does this really compare to all the other stuff you've done? Because you've done so much great stuff. I have been really lucky. What's nice about this show is um, I was in it from the beginning. I loved ER, but I came in on season seven of that show. And to be part of this thing right from the ground up, um, that has the kind of that the audience is like it and the critics like it is a really nice thing for me because I, I did news radio which I love but you know people didn't really get to see it you know it wasn't that popular so it's really fun to sort of start with something this good you know? what a cast man they're all Golden Globe nominees you just sit there and kick back and say are you autopilot except I don't kick back I sort of feel like I it's you have to lean in so much and really be on point and really feel like I'm bringing it because everyone around me and not just the cast but in terms of the writing and the crew camera department props like everyone brings it and that's really hard to find as you know yep. like that's a really hard thing to achieve so yeah Feeling pretty fortunate. You stir the pot a bunch this season. I do. I'm really excited. I'm telling everyone that the episode we're going to see tonight, episode three, is a episode where Whitney is bringing to the forefront a lot of things that people have been hiding and denying. Um, so she uncovers a lot of secrets uh, on this episode. So Whitney's the code breaker of the of the show. I yeah, love it. Whitney is the the truth teller and the and I think she's also the most openly sensitive. So she's still reminding everybody that you know, what they did was messed up and that they should still be hurting. First of all, congratulations on creating a show that everybody's talked about. What do you think it says about relationships and truth that comes out of the relationships? Uh, I guess that we don't, um, that we're not as certain as, of each other as we thought we were. Um, or that maybe we always have a little bit of doubt in, in even our very long-term relationships about whether or not we really understand what the other person is thinking or who, who our spouse is. You know, I think that um, I think that being in a relationship is a kind of a dance between being with somebody and being alone, uh, and that's kind of what we're trying to do with the affair is to show that that even in a relationship there are these these two radically different experiences that are happening at any given time. FX struck gold when Noah Hawley adapted Fargo for television from the Coen Brothers' classic hit movie. Now in season two, we are transported back to the 70s, where we get to see some of the town's most beloved characters in their earlier years, as well as meet some new and mysterious faces. How will it all go down? We ask the cast. Kirsten Dunst, what a change of pace for you, for someone who's built such a great movie career, great TV show you're on right now. Talk yeah. to me about that change of pace and doing TV. I mean, TV is where it's at right now, you know? It's the best content, it's like amazing, like adult content, you know? It's just, it feels like the movies these days are more for teenagers and television is more for adults in a way, you know? Like when I grew up, I, was, I watched TGIF and all these kid shows and like the movies were for adults kind of mostly and now I feel like it's so sophisticated and the quality is amazing. When you look at Peggy, I don't know whether she's going to strangle me or hug me. Talk to me about bringing those different layers to life with her because there's a lot of mystery surrounding her. Yeah, she's definitely mentally, she has major issues. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and it was really fun to play, but also, you know, I, I couldn't judge her while playing her, obviously, but she's nuts, she's totally nuts. Yeah, I play Ed Blumquist, uh, 
He's a butcher's assistant, devoted husband to uh, to Peggy Blumquist, played by Kirsten Dunst. And um, yeah, he's just sort of hopelessly in love and and uh, gets himself mixed up in a lot of really terrible things. What, in terms of choosing this, what drew you to Fargo? Um, I really, I just really liked the style and it was something that I, it was a character that I don't, didn't really feel like I played before and then speaking with Noah Hawley the first time we met, it was just, I knew it was in good hands and um, I mean the cast, I don't know, it was just, it was just one of those that seemed like it would, it would be hard to mess it up given everyone involved, you know. The cast was amazing from top to bottom, the, the crew was incredible, the writing of course was something you almost never get as an actor, certainly not in, in film and television and uh, it just was, and, and I was so thrilled when I saw the first episode because and about six of us got to see a little private screening of it and we were just ecstatic at the editing and the music. We said, this is so cool, you know, like one of the actors said, I didn't know if he was going to go kind of country with the music or what, but he got this really eclectic 70s music. I, I just was very impressed. This was uh, an unbelievable uh, luck that I got this, that Noah wanted me in the show. It was I, I still don't, <laughs> I keep pitching myself that it's real. and. To try to follow up on all the acclaim of the first season was obviously a challenge, but uh, it seems it seems that people are responding to it. Is there a true detective-like pressure coming off of a successful season one where you're like, we got to deliver the goods on this one? I think it's any pressure to uh, accomplish what they did the first season. Uh, Noah did something really original, even though it was based on the Coen brother tone. Uh, everyone thought he was crazy, and I think they thought he was even crazier to try to do it again and not do it the same way. To go back 30 years and do the 70s, Reagan, uh, big hair, it's, uh, it's, it's a, a tall order, but he, I think he pulled it off. Talk to me about inhibiting this world because I feel like we're being transported back to the 70s in it. Well, we had all the resources at our disposal to create that world. We had a great set designer, we had wonderful wardrobe, we had all the uh, accoutrements necessary to pull it off. Uh, so all the actors had to do was just try to do their best. It was a win-win, uh, man. I mean, you know, a lot of times, I'm a mercenary, so I've worked under uh, optimal situations, and I've worked under situations that are less than optimal. <laughs> this was an optimal situation. You get to join one of the most successful series of last year. Yeah. Talk to me about joining this wonderful cast for Fargo. Oh, it was amazing. I mean, amazingly written, uh, beautifully shot, beautifully acted. It was, it was an incredible uh, show to be a part of. Were you a fan of the first season? Did you know what you were going into? No, I didn't until um, until I was approached to do it, and then I watched the first season, and I was I was like instantly hooked. But I hadn't seen it before, and it's brilliant. How do you keep the sensibility of a standalone movie in a TV series? Yeah, well, having an ending helps. You know, <laughs> I think that's the biggest part of it is to be going someplace. And and then the great thing is that it's not a two-hour movie, so you're not a slave to the plot. You can really take your time and explore the characters and the themes, all while making very deliberate steps toward your end. There are great television shows, and then there are those that transcend culture and change people's lives. Transparent tackles the topic of transgender life and how it affects a close-knit family, and does it with such heart and substance that it has become one of our generation's most important series. We chatted with the cast about the new season and how it's starting a conversation in America. Winner. How crazy is that? I've got it's no not you... crazy. Emmy it's winner? Like totally... How many Emmys do you have? Two. Uh, but two. that's from a long time ago. He's trying to yeah. catch you know up what? right now. This guy... I got one. <laughs> he is at, and has been nominated a million times for all these other classic characters. This was this was it. This was the right. This is the deserved. This is this is the right thing. This is that's all I can say. Where do you keep your first Emmy? I've got to know. Where's the spot? I have to tell you where it is. Uh, uh, we have a round table with the Lazy Susan, 
and we put oh. it on the thing. <laughs> and so it's the bad. kids put it there, but now we have it. It's in the kitchen. It's in the dining room um, because the kids are very excited about it because it goes like that, and it's big and gold. And <laughs> they don't understand, but they think it's funny. It's great. We're heading into season two, guys. Jill Soloway mentioned the word fighting a, a war right now. What has this done? This, this show has done so much for that war. Talk to me about that impact. I, I think um, uh, that sentence is a very interesting sentence, but the, the, it's a war against uh, phobia and prejudice and hatred and ignorance. And uh, ignorance is the, is the enemy. Uh, and we, we are whatever, whatever this thing is called, this little engine that could with Amazon, who's just been brilliant and terrific, we're, we're making a difference. You tell stories for a living. Do you ever imagine this one would resonate with people the way it has? Um, I've never been a part of anything that's resonated in this way. I mean, it, it really, when we were first making this show, it felt like we were making sort of like a, you know, indie type of, it felt like an indie film that we we're making on the east side of LA that was going to air on Amazon. We didn't know really what that meant. And, you know, like nine months later, we won the Golden Globe and it became this sort of phenomenon. So it's very surprising uh, and shocking to just sort of, because uh, we are kind of like a family. It feels small to us, but everyone knows who we are now. Does this still blow your mind to see the, the, the impact of the show? I think it's blowing my mind more as time goes on, when, especially when you realize that season two hasn't even been released. I mean, I was like, this is all happening on 10 episodes of half-hour television. That's it. That's all that's out there of this story so far. That's five hours of entertainment that is causing this massive national reaction. And I just think, wow, she is, Jill Soloway has really touched on a cultural nerve that is resonating through with families all over this country and not just about trans issues just about authenticity and family and you know and it's it's really uh, it is mind-blowing and, and, and I, I think when we were at the Emmys and I think we won five or something and you go insane. you're like we're on Amazon we're in season one we're at a show where half the cast is over the age 40 like where are we what world are we in so it's really exciting and I think it proves that people are really hungry for um, smart singular storytelling and that's what Jill is doing. How has your family and what's happened with your family changed you as an artist? Um, honestly it's changed me so much. I, in some ways I think I look at my life as everything that happened before Transparent and everything that happened after and probably everything that happened before my parent came out and everything that happened after. Um, well we all know who we are now. I think we were all sort of feeling around in the dark for each other a little bit and when a family grows up with a secret everybody's really kind of not sure who they are or where they stand so once somebody transitions everybody in the family starts to transition and we're all changing and we're all growing and and having um, the show is this collective thing that everybody in our family can hold on to and process our actual lives through it's, it's kind of weird kind of fun From running around with an Oscar winner, to screaming at unsuspecting pedestrians, to creating a Scientology-themed obstacle course, Billy Eichner has perfected a new style of comedy on his popular show, Billy on the Street. Check out what the Red Hot Comedian told us about the new season. I am so obsessed with your running around with all these celebrities for this season. Thank you. How do you get someone like a Julianne Moore, a Tina Fey, or Sarah Jessica Parker this Thursday to be on the show? Uh, it depends on who it is. Julianne Moore, I DM'd on Twitter, weirdly. Uh, that's how I got her. <laughs> Tina, I kind of knew through the comedy, New York comedy circle, so we reached out to her team. Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, I had met before. I knew she was a fan of the show. It depends on the person, but it's always an adventure booking the show. How much work goes into it? Because we obviously the finish, see the finished three, four, five minute sketch. Mm -hmm. But how much during the day are you guys running around? How many people are you getting? I'm so curious about the background process of it all. Uh, we shoot a lot. You have to shoot a lot in order to get enough footage. It's exhausting. <laughs> um, with the celebrity stuff, it depends how much time they can give me. Sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's three hours. That's usually the max. I remember seeing your YouTube videos in the beginning. Now yeah. to see that the show is on cable. Mm -hmm. To see that journey, what has it been like for you? Uh, exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, wonderful. Wonderfully exhausting, I would say. 
Who are some guests that you dream of getting? You've got so many great people, but who are the dream lists coming up? Um, Meryl is always on our dream list. Uh, there are lots of people I love that haven't done it. Steve Carell, I love. Steve Martin. People I grew up loving, you know, I don't know, Colbert maybe. How much planning goes into the skits? Like Julianne Moore, great example. To have her act on screen is mind-blowing yeah. to me. So how much planning goes into executing those types of skits? Um, you know, me and a small team of uh, creative producers sit in a room for six weeks and try to figure out exactly what we're going to do with everyone. In the case of Julianne Moore, that idea just seemed exciting to me, to have her do what she does best, but in the throes of this kind of schlocky Times Square environment. Um, I like that juxtaposition, and it, she was so game for it, which is what made it work. The people's reaction, that's half of the funniness involved. Yeah. What are some of the one or two or three funniest reactions that you've gotten from people on the street? Oh, man. There's the woman from a couple of seasons ago who insisted Denzel Washington was in the Phantom of the Opera on Broadway <laughs> and fights with me about it. There was the guy this season that insisted Harrison Ford was in a terrible car accident, which when he was in a plane accident. Uh, whenever they strongly disagree with me and they're wrong, I really like it. Well, that's it for us here from the Paley Center for Media in New York. Make sure to join us again behind the Velvet Rope.